Good morning, Twitch. How's everybody doing today? Thanks for joining me today in episode number 70. Yep, here we are. Hey, Calvin, I'm glad you're here, man. Good to see you. Uh, I'm feeling a little sluggish today. A little sluggish this morning, but uh, as you can see, we've got some new bot features happening there. You can see I've got uh, at the very top of the screen uh, some, uh, whoa, a subscription from Calvin. Hey, appreciate that, Calvin. How is the, uh, how's the Xamarin deployment going? I know I keep asking about that. 11 months, my goodness. That is a lot of subscribing. I appreciate that. So, uh, it's in production and working wonderfully. Well, that's terrific news. I'm glad to hear that, Calvin. Amazing stuff. And, and you pretty much went from zero to 60 on Xamarin. So that's, that's very cool. Very glad to hear that. So I'm feeling a little sluggish today. Uh, I'm not feeling like super energetic uh, today. So I don't know if I'm going to make it through a full two-hour stream, but we'll see. We'll see what we can do. Uh, I thought just maybe do something a little bit fun here. I think I've done this on the stream in the past. I don't remember for sure, but uh, the movie game. I know I've brought it up before. Uh, and I have like a prototype of it running. It's it does not use Twitch. It does not use a real database. It pretty much just uses the TMDB API and nothing else and a console app. Uh, but I, I designed it, hopefully I designed it, so where I could start plugging in those pieces uh, if, I, if I want to. So I'm going to revisit that today, see if it's still working. I haven't touched the code in a while. See if it's still working, explain the concept, and maybe start adding some actual integrations to it. All right, so just a normal startup stuff here. If uh, you have questions, ask them in the channel. I, I, I want to hear your questions. I want to respond to your questions. I want to help you in any way I can. And questions are one way we can start doing that. So don't be afraid to ask <clears throat> noob questions in here. Uh, I'm not going to, I'm not, I don't even like the, using the word noob. Uh, you know, uh, learning, learners, you know, we're all learners. We're all on, on a path. So ask us, ask any question you want to, and uh, we'll get it. I'll, I'm happy to address it. I'm a member of Team Live Coders. I bring up a browser here. And I can show you how to check out Team Live Coders. This is one way. This is this is the way I like to go. Is uh, I like to just go to twitch slash team slash live coders. And you can get a list here of everyone on the team. And who's streaming right now. So uh, here's yours truly. Just started. And here's everybody else who's currently streaming. Uh, Dan Siegel here, Begin Bot, all kinds of people. So uh, if you're interested in, in uh, checking out um, live coding, this is a place to start, a place to go on Twitch to see who's streaming right now. And and uh, you can see all everybody else here who's not streaming, but it's a big team, 147 people right now. And uh, more information on live coders here coming up in just a second. But Twitch slash team slash live coders, check it out. Another place you can go is the awesome developers streaming list which is on github github slash bnb slash awesome developer streams this is a big text file basically this this readme here is a list of people who are live coding and where they're live coding and what they're live coding about and so you can just do a control f here and search for a, a name or a keyword or uh, whatever and you'll get a list of, of people um you'll, you'll you'll find different people you could follow on on twitch or youtube or facebook or mixer or periscope or wherever wherever they're streaming. So for instance, I could just do control F and search for PHP. Oh, there we go. BTOR is doing PHP. Uh, uh, Codigo, Colin Henderson, Daniel Jenkins, etc. So I can keep on doing that. This is a great way to find people who are streaming about stuff that interests you, whether it's stuff you already know and, and want to learn more about, or it's brand new stuff and you want to see how someone else is, is working with it. That's a great place to go. Okay, next up bit.ly slash grovestube. I just did an update yesterday, so all, all the videos are out there. I, I, l I let that slip for two or three episodes, but they're all out there on YouTube now. So you can go bit.ly slash grovestube. If you like my, like my, uh, my boss's boss likes to say these days, you like to time travel, uh, this is a great way to do it. Go on YouTube and you can skip through and 2x speed and all that kind of stuff if you want to do that. Personally, I prefer the live interaction uh, of Twitch, but uh, not everyone can do that. Uh, not everyone wants to do that, but I still want to make these videos available to you. You can leave comments, ask questions. I'm happy to address those on the stream 
or even in the even in the comments there on YouTube. So if you're if you're on YouTube watching us now, hello, how are you? Thanks for joining me. Upcoming events. So I will be a guest on on Drabus's stream. Uh, I think this is tomorrow, uh, April twenty second. Yeah, tomorrow, eleven a.m. Eastern U.S. time. We're going to be doing some stuff with Web API and .NET Core and introducing some Couchbase, uh, some NoSQL, of course. MB Crump, what's going on? Good to see you. Thanks for stopping in, saying hi. Uh, so uh, tomorrow, 11 a.m. Eastern U.S. time, I'll be there. I, maybe an hour-ish, hour or two-ish. I don't know how long it's going to be. I'll stay as long as he'll have me, but uh, uh, we'll check it out there. We'll see what uh, I don't have... He said not to prepare anything. I don't have any slides or any, any code or anything prepared. So we're just going to pair a program, basically. We're just going to wing it and see what happens. Uh, PHP Tech, still working on some stuff with this. Um, we'll see how that goes. Don't really have any more news on that. GDD Cloud Ozo, this day is getting closer and closer. This is a May 5th meetup. I'll be presenting to that user group virtually. So, of course, you can join if you want to. Going to this meetup link right there. This is actually... Uh, came out of uh, speaking at a GDG in Indianapolis, uh, in Indianapolis uh, at a virtual uh, conference or a virtual user group. And the NDC Oslo, that'll be in June. Still no more details on that other than I know it's, I think they're still planning on it actually happening. So, and this is, this is new, Live Coders Conference. This, was, this just happened a week or two ago, uh, the first one. And now they're gonna, they've announced a second one. This will be June 20th. This was a lot of fun last time. Uh, so check this out again, put this on your calendar, June the 20th, the Live Coders Conference, livecoders.dev, you definitely want to check that out, um, there'll be an open call for speakers soon, it'll be mostly team members is what I've heard, but uh, there'll be an open call for speakers, uh, so definitely want to check that out, keep an eye on that, and definitely check out the Live Coders. All right, what else we got? Okay, this is not what we're doing today, uh, we're going to work on the movie game today. I don't really have, I don't think this is on GitHub. Did I put it on GitHub? I don't think so. Uh, just based on what I, I checked earlier, I have some sensitive information in there, so I wouldn't have committed that to GitHub. All right, but here it is, uh, Visual Studio. This is the movie game. So I'll take you through it here real quick. Um, basically, how the movie game works is this is a this is a party game. You may have heard this before. Maybe it's called something else. I don't know. But you start by naming an actor or a movie. I don't know either one. So uh, you sort of form a circle of people, and you say, "Okay, the person says Tom Cruise." All right. The next person has to name a movie that Tom Cruise was in. So they'll say, "I don't know, a few good men." The next person has to name an actor or an actress who is in that movie and keep the chain going. So you could say Jack Nicholson. I think he's in I think he's in that one. And then you keep going. So you say, oh, The Shining. And uh, at that point, uh, when someone can't guess one, uh, they're, they're out. If they get it wrong, they're out. Uh, or they can challenge and they can say, I don't think you know anybody else who was in The Shining besides Jack Nicholson. And, they, and then they can either fail and then they're out. Or they say, okay, it's Shirley Duvall. And then that the person who challenges out. And you keep going in this fashion uh, until you actually, uh, so, so one person's left, right? So that's that's kind of the idea. And it's a, it's a fun party game. Um, yeah, it's the bang help commands. I'm glad that it's working there. So feel free to try any of those out. There's a couple new ones in there, uh, MB Crump. So check those out, especially the, um, what's the, the Lurk one, I think is, uh, is the newest one I just, I just committed uh, and, and deployed yesterday. There you go. <laughs> mm, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, so there you go. The, the lurk command just sort of tells people, no, there's no unlurk. It's just, a, it's just a fun little way of saying, hey, I'm here, but I'm lurking. That's all it is. <laughs> it picks a random message uh, to, to show that there. So, All right, so this is... This is the program, and what you can see here is most of the stuff is pretty much faked out. So the console input, console output, this is supposed to be Twitch, either Twitch chat or through the Twitch bot up to the screen, maybe if we wanted to enhance it later with like pictures of the actor or the, or the poster of the movie, things like that. 
in-memory data, right, this is literally just a wrapper around a, a C-sharp dictionary. It's not a real database. Uh, this would be replaced with a real database later. Uh, fake movie service. Uh, so this one is, yeah, this has some fake data I put in it. So I don't actually have to hit the uh, TM. Oh, I see my badges are up there working. That's good. I, was, I haven't actually tested them with the longer period of time, but I'm glad they're working. So that's good. Uh, so I didn't want to actually hit the TMDB, the, the movie database. So I just put some fake data in there. As you can see, that's not even being used. i comment that out. Because I replaced it with a, the, a real TMDB um, client. So using the API. And then I put a wrapper around it. Because uh, I think there's some unit testing issues with that. And then, uh, so what's, what is that, real movie? Well, the real movie uses the wrapper. What in the world? Why do I have a wrapper around a wrapper around a wrapper? Let me see. I'm trying to remember this. So this is this is one that I created. Okay. And what is this one? Processor service. My wrapper factory, yeah. Uh, oh, okay. I think I know what it was. All right. So this is the client. This is the actual API for TMDB. This is a wrapper I created around it because the TMDB client was hard to mock out, I think. And then the, the, the game itself needed some extra logic in it uh, because it doesn't exactly jive with the way the game works. So I put that logic in this TMDB processor service. Okay, and then those all go into this game engine. So hypothetically, if I uh, created uh, a Twitch input and output, I could just use the same um, implementation and pass those right into there. This, that's actually an interface here, right? So this is I game input, right? I might be good to be the explicit here, I game output, uh, and uh, so on, right? So those are all, I could all implement those with different implementations, and the, put a database one there, but and use the real movie one, and away we go. Um, now I may want to move this out of a console into like a, um, like I did with a bot, like a background service. But for right now, you know, just uh, just running a console app. So let's see if this still works. Uh, and it, it's not actually using Twitch at all. It's using, zoom in a little bit here. It's using a console input to kind of simulate Twitch. It's not really easy to do, right? But it's completely fake. So I could put in a fake user in here. So if I remember how this works, uh, there's a command to start the game. So let's go to game engine. Uh, and uh, movie, yeah, so, so bang movie new. So I have to type in a username, so this will be Matt. Matt will say, I want to start a new movie game. And I'll say, okay, there's a new game starting in five minutes. So then someone else could join the movie. I could say Calvin could say, okay, movie join. And now Calvin's joined. And then we could have someone else like MB Crump also join. Okay, and so it's just scoring, it's going to keep waiting for people to join the game. It can be as many people as we want to right now. Uh, maybe I should put a cap on it at some point. You don't want 100 people playing. That would be uh, intolerable. Um, so maybe like eight people, 10 people, something like that. So the game is now starting. So Matt goes first. It picks someone at random, I think, and also picks, do I have to name a, a movie or an actor? So uh, I'm saying Matt. Guess, and I'm going to start with uh, Top Gun. Okay, good job, that's correct. Uh, it's kind of a weird phrasing, but there we go. So now it's MB Crump's term. So MB Crump has to name an actor that's in Top Gun. Top, Top Gun? <laughs> Top Gun is a whole new movie, a whole different movie. So he guesses Tom Cruise, that's good. Now it's Calvin's turn. Guess a movie that Tom Cruise is in. And so uh, Calvin could say, uh, what, uh, Vanilla Sky. Calvin's favorite movie, Vanilla Sky. Okay, and it keeps going. So now it's Matt's turn. I don't know anybody in Vanilla Sky. So I'm just going to guess and I'm going to say Val Kilmer. Developer's Garage. Hey, what's going on? So that's not correct. So I'm out now. Thanks for joining Developer's Garage. Good to see you. Everyone uh, should check out Developer's Garage. I'll give Developer's Garage a little shout out there. Uh, so now it's MB Crump's turn. So he has to guess, uh, again, an actor in Vanilla Sky. So he knows so Penelope Cruz is in Vanilla Sky, I think, right? Nope. So that might be a problem with an accent mark on that. So uh, MB Crump is out and Calvin wins. So that's the game.
You can't do it. You should be able to do it. Oh, um, try it without the at symbol. Yeah. What in the world? You got, you're, you're a mod, a subscriber, everything. You should be able to do that. So I'm going to make a note. Um, that might be a bug in the old bot. Calvin can't do a shout out. Can't sew a shout out. Can't do a shout out. It definitely should allow you. I, I think it's I think it's only for subscribers. And you are definitely a subscriber. So it should work for you. I just saw you subscribe, uh, resubscribe just like five minutes ago. So it should definitely work. That's a bug. Gotta fix it. Oh cool. MB Crump following developers garage. Yeah. I haven't actually checked out Developer's Garage in a while, in a raid, so I'll have to, have to, maybe we're just not on the right schedule or something. But I used to, I used to go raid Developer's Garage every once in a while. So anyway, that's, that's the simulator. The next step, you're on Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Oh, well that's, that explains it. I'm on Tuesday and Thursday. I used to, used to do on Tuesday and Thursday, I think, right? Maybe not. I don't know. Anyway, um... So I, I can't I can't raid unless I change my schedule or vice versa. But uh, definitely check out Developers Garage on Twitch. Okay, so uh, what we could do used to be on Wednesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Oh, <laughs> thank you for the host there, MB Crump. I haven't seen that graphic in a long time, but thank you for uh, for hosting. Appreciate that. Uh, most hosting is automatic these days, so I haven't, I haven't seen a manual hosting in a while. But thank you very much for that. Berries and cream to you. Okay, and uh, hope I can send some folks your way. Yeah, that'd be cool. All right, so what we can do now, and, and again, I said this early on, I'm, I'm feeling kind of low energy today, so I don't want to bite off a huge piece here, but uh, we can go... Uh, Implement one of these with a real implementation, one that uses Twitch um, for input-output, one that uses uh, database. If I go to Twitch, though, I can just, I can just start, start, we can all start playing the game right now. We can test it out. It's not going to save anything to the database, because I haven't hooked up to a real database yet, but it, it can at least get the game playing. So maybe that's, the, that's where to start. So why don't we do that? Uh, so instead of, well, I had a new project here. And instead of console, this will be um, this will be a hmm 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 hmm. I don't. Does it need to be console? I don't think it needs to be console app because we're already in a console app. Yeah. So this needs to be a class library. Yep. And it's going to be the movie game uh, dot Twitch. Uh, I let's just call it Twitch I O. Why not? Twitch input and output. Not, not the domain name, but the input, input, output. Okay. And so we first need a implementation of uh, uh, iGame input. This might work. I don't know. Whoa. A noisy truck out there. Uh, so we'll change this to Twitch input. And uh, I need to add a reference here to the core project so that the interface will show up. There it is. And you implement basically just the one method. Okay. Uh, all right, so that's fine. And then we'll switch this over to uh, Twitch input equals new Twitch input. So this will need to have a reference to the Twitch project. And this is all in a simulator, right? Because I, I do want to make it an ASP.NET hosted service later. So I'm going to keep the simulator naming for now. I'll call it Twitch.io. Okay. So that should, there we go. Okay, so Twitch input goes here. And then we'll also have an output. Uh, not there, Twitch input. So this will be public class, Twitch output, my game output. And that has just one. Now, uh, the way I've designed this is kind of to, to allow different types of messages. 
to be passed in. Again, I just have one right now. It's a very simple text one. But the idea would be later. Hey, cool. My little badge up there again. I, li I really like that thing. That was a lot of fun to work on that. That whole that whole automatic badging thing up there. That's part of the Twitch bot, by the way, which is on GitHub. You can check out the source code for that and see how I did it. I did it with uh, jQuery, actually. So I added jQuery into uh, the, the, uh, the, the uh, chat bot, finally. Uh, so there's a nice little animate effect in jQuery. And also used Font Awesome for that. So that's not an image up there. That's just uh, text and, and Font Awesome um, in, in HTML. So it's not like I created images. So I can add them dynamically, actually. If there's another social network, if I wanted to add a TikTok up there, for instance, I could add a TikTok link, which I'm on TikTok now, by the way. <laughs> if anyone's on TikTok, uh, let me know. I want to I expand my TikTok network a little bit. Right now, it's just Calvin and like one of the impractical jokers and, and a few others and that's pretty much it and uh you know i i if anyone remembers vine i loved vine it was it was so good i loved vine so much one of my favorite things oh yeah mb crump is on there too yeah <laughs> so all my twi my tiktok family is here um i loved vine it was one of my favorite things uh, so much fun there's so much hey thank you for the follow brian l robinson Thank you for stopping in, checking things out. Hey, and thanks for the host. We're we gonna get another uh, berries and cream for another for another manual host. There it is, <laughs> berries and cream. Thank you, Developer Garage. Uh, but uh, so I kind of put off TikTok for a while because I thought it was tied to like music and pop music and that kind of stuff, and I was just not interested. Uh, developer content on there would be fun. So one of the things I did with Vine, this, just for fun, this is not a serious effort at all, but uh, Vine, if you don't remember Vine, it was six seconds, I think? Six second clips was the max you could do on Vine. So what I did was I took a, a, session, a session I was presenting at conferences, an hour-long session, and I condensed it into six seconds. <laughs> and I called it uh, Six Second Conference, something like that. It didn't catch on, but I, I like the idea of, okay, I've pre prepared an hour worth of content, but let's condense it down to six seconds. <laughs> so anyway, that's that's how I'm treating TikTok right now. I don't think that's necessarily how you're supposed to be treating it, but that's how I'm treating it. It's just a, a, revised, a, a revival of Vine. So we'll see. I put a few videos on there, just some fun stuff. I might start putting some, like my son and I are doing a lot of baseball practice in the backyard because... He can't practice with his team right now. So maybe some of that go on later. That's not super funny or exciting, but uh, something I could try. I keep seeing the same format over and over, different people using the same background audio and lip syncing over it. Yeah, I, I mean, I think that's probably the way TikTok started was just a way to, I don't know, people to just goof with their with their favorite pop songs or whatever. That doesn't appeal to me at all. <laughs> so, I you know I'm I'm more interested in, you know, in Vine. There was a lot of clever stuff, a lot of good comedy on there, and it was really really quick. So you get to the point very quickly. TikTok, I think you can go longer. You can go sixty seconds or even more. This generation's America's Funniest Home Video. I mean, that's basically YouTube, but Vine felt a lot like that as well. It wasn't, but it wasn't just funny stuff. There was also clever stuff and. You know, interesting, you know, pictures are fine, like still images are fine, right? Uh, but like six seconds of video can tell a little bit more story about what's going on. Like I remember I, I, one of my favorite vines was, that I made was, I was at a Chinese restaurant in, I don't know, some little town in south, southwest, uh, south, south, southwest Ohio. And there was a, it was just this really trashy, like just dirty uh health code violating chinese buffet i mean the the carpet was just like had like black spots it was just awful but i thought it was really funny in the parking lot there's a there was a parking spot that what well, I, I ate there by the way by the way i'm not above eating uh, at a uh at a disgusting a restaurant if they have a good buffet just for the record uh but they had a parking spot that was painted uh, that said mayor on it, <laughs> which I found to be hilarious. The mayor 
had his own parking spot at this Chinese restaurant, <laughs> this Chinese, this, this disgusting Chinese buffet. So I thought that was really funny. I'd never seen a parking spot designated for the mayor before at a restaurant. So anyway, that, that was six seconds. I could tell that story. I could sort of show the sign and then pan down to the parking spot. Anyway, I'm gushing about Vine. I, I've heard that there's people trying to bring Vine back or something. And I don't know if that's going to happen, especially with TikTok out there. But that's how I look at it. I look at it like Vine. Okay, so Twitch output. I'll make this a separate class. Oh, no, I don't want to remove it. What? what are you doing? What are you doing, JetBrains? Move to, yes. Tried to remove because it's not being used yet. Okay, and then we'll have a Twitch output. There's a new Twitch output. And there we go. Okay, so these don't actually do anything with Twitch yet. Uh, so uh, what, what Twitch input does, what I want this to do is it's going to return this tuple here. I'm, by the way, I'm using tuples for this. Because all I really care about getting from Twitch is the username and what message they are they're saying. That's all I care about. So this is just kind of a, a facade over the Twitch API. Because I know, having worked with the Twitch bot uh, and, the, and the Twitch lib now, that there's a lot of stuff, a lot of metadata that Twitch can give you. But all I really care about at this point is username and message. And I could change this later to make this a more complex object. But I figured if, if that's all I need is those two things... Um, then I'll just use a tuple. 15 seconds or 60. So I think you can actually, you can make videos that are shorter, right? With Vine, they had to be six seconds, I think. Hmm, excuse me. With TikTok, they don't have to be full 15 seconds or full 60 seconds, I think. I'm kind of new to it. Okay, so uh, switch input. So basically, what I need now is to uh, include Twitch lib here into my simulator. So Twitch lib, oh uh, boy, I'm trying to remember if it was the clients or just Twitch lib, and I'm going to have to look at my, uh, my, my bot. See how I did it over there, because I can't remember those things. I should, but I can't. So start up. So, uh, well, I, I want to look at CS Proj first, but I also want to see Twitch client. Is that what I want? I think that's what I want. Twitch client. Uh, so let's go back to here and look at CS Proj. And what I bring in is... Where is it? Where is Twitch? Is it, It's not in the web. It's in, it's in core. CS Proj. Twitch lib client. Okay, that's what I want. Twitch lib client. Okay, and the latest stable is 3.1.4. Oh, cool. Is that what I'm using over there? It is. Okay. Good. All right, so we're adding Twitch lib client in there. All right. And uh, so this, this kind of thing where I'm newing up things and passing them into other objects and passing those into other objects and then passing them into one more object. This is, this is kind of how I think about a dependency graph. It's just this depends on this, depends on this, depends on this, depends on this. Uh, and that's something that is much e more easily addressed with a IOC container or dependency in injection tool. Uh, which I'm not going to use in this program, but when I get to the ASP.NET version, I will definitely be using that. So I don't have to go through and manage the whole dependency graph uh, by myself, which for a relatively simple one like this, I mean, we have four dependencies, and then this one has sort of, you know, two dependencies, but it's going to get more complicated. Uh, so uh, that's something that I want to, I'd want to manage with ASP.NET's built-in dependency uh, or depend built-in IOC container. Uh, but in the meantime, let's go back here and look at what I have to do to get the Twitch library up and running. So we'll go to start up here. I'm just going to copy and paste a little bit of code. All right, so the services.add 
all, all that stuff, add transient, add singleton, that's the whole dependency injection stuff that ASP.NET has built in. And I could use that here in a console app as well. Um, I could do that. Uh, but it's, for the console app, it's not like there's a real clean place to do the injection. Um, I mean, I guess there kind of is, but uh, anyway, I'm just not going to do it. <laughs> okay, so I don't need a return. There we go. So uh, configuration. So this is going to get from. So this is going to be. Uh, this is going to be. Uh, sensitive stuff so I'm going to move this off screen here for a second because I have like a little region with sensitive info so I'm going to make one for uh, Twitch username which is not terribly sensitive that's just my name Matthew D. Groves and uh, Twitch OAuth key which I'll just use the same one that I used before. So we go back over here. And so this is going to be a constant, which is username and OAuth key. Okay, and that's all I need for credentials, Twitch client. So then the Twitch client uh, can go into, I think it'll have to go into here as a dependency. And I, I could be wrong about this. So I'll, have to, I'll have to verify for sure, but I want to create a constructor over there. So it's getting the Twitch client. So I need the Twitch client over here. This makes sense as a dependency. Uh, Twitch client.lib needs to be a dependency over here on this project as well. You know, I, I started out f today feeling a little yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be an interface. Feeling a little like low energy, right? But it's amazing how coding makes me feel a little better. Like just to lose myself in the code a little bit. That's that's always been the case. That's one of the things I like about coding is just kind of lose myself in in the code and solving the problem and looking everything up and trying it out, making something happen. Uh, this can this is not too hard code either. This is the same thing. Twitch username. That's actually a problem. I've still got this hard coded here. That needs to go off this. So that's another bug. I'm going to add to my list. Uh, Matthew D. Groves is hard coded in startup.cs. That's a chatbot thing, not a big deal. Right now, I don't think anyone's actually using my chatbot other than me, so it's, it's, it's fine. And if you want to submit a pull request, by the way, to get that fixed, go right ahead. <laughs> it's, all, it's all open source, so please go ahead and do that. Use my GitHub info. We'll be up there at some point, but it's just GitHub slash uh, mgroves. Okay, so input, Twitch client. So if I remember correctly, um, it's a little different. It's like an event you have to set up with a Twitch client, if I'm not mistaken. Let me go back over here. Core hosted service, right? And I think it is, yes, something like this. So I'm going to do that. Uh, right here. Okay. And then I'll just create a little... I was going to get the input. How, where does this get? Where am I using this get at? That's not. I think that's quite the way I want to do this. Game input. Input dot get. Yeah. So this is it's sort of grabbing a message instead of waiting for one, right? Probably need to rethink that. Like that, that should be an event of its own as well, right? That's kind of how it should work. It's, 
So let's, let me think about this. All right, what would be the easiest way to do this? So create that method over here in the Twitch bot. I've got this, okay. So this is a, it just gets the chat message, right? Like so. All I really care about is the username, is the is the chat message dot username, and the message itself, which is chat message dot message. And so I want to push those out. So this is not the right way to do it, I don't think. This this is fine for a console app, right? Because it'll just sort of block here until it gets something. But Twitch, it'll have to. Uh, let me think about this. I could make this like a could push it onto a queue. I think that actually makes sense. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because then get will then pop it off of queue, which means that it sort of will process messages in order. I like that. I like that idea. Okay, so we're just going to let's just queue here. We'll say uh, message queue equals new queue of now. Can I put a tuple in here? Is that allowed? Looks like it is. Uh, okay, and so uh, then we say message queue dot push dot end queue. Right, no, it's not a stack, it's a queue. So we're going to end queue um, username message like that. Pretty cool. It's like double parentheses. Pretty wild stuff. All this is going to do is just say uh, if message queue uh, count count is greater than zero, then return message queue dot dq. Okay. Otherwise. I guess we could just we could keep doing that. I don't know if a while true is the right way to, right way to do it, but it should work at least for now. And it's just going to um, it's just going to wait, sleep for I don't know. Uh, has to be a relatively quick. You know, I don't know if this is the optimal way to do this. I may have to come back to this and, and rethink this, right? Um, but sleep for half a second and then try again. Guess what I'm eating? Hey, it's Dota 2 Attitude. <laughs> What's going on, Dota 2 Attitude? Let me guess. Um, this is my new favorite Twitch game. Guess what I'm eating? Is it a ham sandwich with mayonnaise? Yeah, yeah, it is. Those ham sandwiches are pretty good. You know, it kind of, kind of makes me want to... Oh, hold the lettuce. <laughs> Did you come up with a video clip yet of uh, something sandwich related for your intro, Dota 2? <laughs> I, actually, I actually added one for a Surly Dev, so if anyone knows where Surly Dev is, just uh, let him know that he's got himself a uh, an intro. Homework is tough. What kind of homework are you working on? You know, I could just say, well, I don't know. oh, the, the homework that I gave you. <laughs> Is this, does anyone know a, a good uh, ham sandwich uh, video clip? Uh, what The one I was thinking of, actually, um, this is maybe a little obscure. Let's see if I can find it. This is a commercial from a TV show. Hey, thank you for the follow, Cores One. Uh, it's not ham sandwich per se, but here, I'll just show you the video. <laughs> Love that one. This is from a, a TV show called Community. It's... It's been off the air for a while now. Um, 
but uh, it's one of the characters in the movie goes off to Hollywood and starts making a commercial. And that that's one his first commercial where he, he, he goes viral with it is the ham girl. <laughs> that was really good. Adam Sandler makes an awesome sandwich in that video. Which video? That could be my that could be my quote. Ham girl. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna make that as a maybe. Um, let's see, let's see, to do. Doesn't really fit, but whatever. <laughs> I'm gonna put that, put that as a maybe, uh, as a ham girl for Dota to attitude. We'll see. See if you can come up with something else in the meantime. All right, so we got this cue. I'm just kind of pulling it every half second to see if there's a new message in there. The new messages are being put into it. Good. I'm in your text files. That's important. Yes, it is. So when I'm when I'm mysteriously, when I'm found dead in my office mysteriously, you're going to be the first person they call. Who's this Dota 2 attitude? Suspicious character. <laughs> uh, so, and then this is, this is kind of, uh, there are better jokes out there. There are better jokes than. Uh, anyway, uh, so this is just going to take messages that come in on the chat. You know, the chat, it kind of looks like they come in in a certain order. Technically speaking, uh, you know, I, I don't know if that's the case, uh, depending on where you're viewing it, but I'm going to treat them as they're coming in a certain order and just throw them into a queue and then just sort of dequeue them one at a time. How many threads? Uh, so th right now this is all going to be a single thread. This is all single threaded. In, in the ASP.NET, it'll be a background task uh, process. Um, and actually that that kind of helps solve some of my issues, I think, because I do have a, a lot of locks in here. I was concerned about uh, what exactly you're, what you're saying is that threads are scary, right? Uh, so I, I think I have a few locks in here. Yeah, you can see I have the sync root pattern going. But I don't think that's going to be a major problem if I'm just pulling things in off the, off the queue like this. So I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. And I think there's actually a, a thread. Is there a thread safe queue? Like concurrent queue. So if it comes to that, I can always use concurrent queue. Yeah, threads are are terrifying, and I you know I've worked with threads and asynchronous coding for uh, you know a little bit off and on here and there. Uh, you know, web development doesn't come up that often. Yeah, um, but uh, yeah. Uh, it's, it can be a, it can be a real pain with like a desktop app or a mobile app. The last time I really got heavy into it with was a Xamarin app actually, um, and one of the reasons I like Post Sharp a lot. Uh, this was kind of pre the async a wait uh, days, when you when you wanted to do that sort of thing, you'd have to use threads, because um, there's a lot of overhead with a lot of, a lot of extra code you got to write to make things thread safe and stuff. Buzzinga. Rui, what's going on? Uh, yeah, there is a new release of Post Sharp yesterday with a new community. I, I saw that. I saw that, and I was uh, I tweeted about it uh, when they did a release candidate a while back. It was really, really cool that they're bringing out the community edition. Um, and if you if you know sort of the history of Post Sharp, it's it's really interesting that they're coming back coming back to that kind of because it started out as like an open source project, and then uh, eventually moved to closed source. Because uh, Gail has bills to pay, <laughs> and post shops are very cool, very hard to uh, hard to do yourself uh, kind of tool. Uh, and then it was it became a there was a free version still, but it went closed source. And then uh, he kind of changed it to a starter edition, which was like a limited feature set, or you know, like a it'd be like a starter, which is free versus enterprise, which has more features and paid. Hard to make money with open source. I don't know about hard um well yeah it's hard to make money period <laughs> uh, and then with open source you have some other wrinkles in there but i mean there's some companies who do it i, I work for a company uh that is uh you know open source i guess uh, we have open source uh kind of open core kind of model and my views not represent the uh the official couch based business views by the way <laughs> just for the record uh, but, you know, we have an enterprise edition as well. You could PR stuff. Yeah, if you want to 
make pull requests to Couchbase, go right ahead. Probably the easiest way to do it is that the uh, documentation project on Couchbase is completely open source. Uh, and so if you want to get in there and, and uh, make documentation fixes, um, write tutorials. For instance, uh, there's this tutorial that came out, someone using OpenID with Couchbase Sync Gateway. It's very cool. Um, but the thing is, though, uh, the great thing about open source docs, and this is true of Microsoft docs or Couchbase docs, and uh, others, uh, there's a few others that have gone this direction as well. If you see a typo in the docs, there's probably gonna be a GitHub button somewhere on that page to go right to that file. And you can edit that typo right there in GitHub and submit a pull request all in GitHub. You don't have to open uh, a Git command line or anything like that. You can just make that change right there. And that's one of the coolest things to me about open source docs like Microsoft and Couchbase and so on is it just makes con contribution so much easier. I love me those git dipsy doodles. Dispy doodle, I don't know what that means. Is that is that some sort of European snack <laughs> or something? I don't know. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, so open source. Where are we? Anyway, what were we talking about? Oh, Canadian. Is it a Canadian snack or something? I don't know. So Post Sharp now at the Community Edition, which is, uh, so they've gone from starter back, oh, starter back to community. So very cool. It's how the marketer described my Excel skills as dipsy doodles. All right. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, I'm, I'm starting to think uh, a different uh, intro video might be more appropriate for you. <laughs> All right. So, okay, we're getting stuff from Twitch. And Twitch output is going to be much easier to do. Um, I'm going to read only field there. Do that. And so all this is going to be is just um, Twitch client dot uh, send message uh, to the channel, which um, just takes off screen here for a second. Where do I have those? They're in. They're private const. Okay, I probably need to make them public consts. So just it just stand by. I'm doing something off screen here. Okay. And this would probably come in from Singleton. <laughs> just like saying Singleton. This would probably come in from a config file. Later it is main, right? Oh no, it's program. Program, not main. Program dot. Oh no 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 no! That's not going to work. Okay. So this needs to do it like this. No, stop. You love singletons, huh? Well, I mean, I don't like writing my own singletons. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to pass in the Twitch username here. Uh, but uh, it's a useful pattern, certainly. Okay, send message, channel name. Okay, and all I need is the um, message here, right? Message dot message. There we go. That might be it, actually. Uh, I might have just uh, hooked up this game to uh, to Twitch. I do need to put in an OAuth token here. So take, take it off screen here for a second. Uh, oh, you know what? It's actually these days. I keep it over in the Azure portal, which also needs to be off screen. In my... Azure uh, app settings. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna play a game. We're well, we're gonna try anyway. It's probably going to uh, probably going to fail because uh, I've never done this before. But uh, we're gonna try it. Okay, taking it off screen. Sensitive information. Uh, Twitch OAuth key. There it is. Copy that over here. Secrets. Close that up. All right. 
Okay, so the way this game works is uh, someone is going to say movie new. This is the command here to start the game. All right, and then if you want to join the game, once after someone's done movie new, you can join the game by saying movie join. All right, and then once the game starts, you're going to be saying uh, uh, bang guess, and then you know your your guess. It's not trivia. It's not trivia. This is a well. It kind of is trivia. It's a it's a movie game. So think of it kind of like uh, the Kevin Bacon game a little bit. But we're going from like say actor to a movie that actor's in to another actor in that movie to a movie that actor's in, etc. Can it be trivia? I could know the answer to. Well, do you know actors? Do you know movies? If you know actor names and movie names, you're going to be in good shape. Movies are a no go. <laughs> All right. Well, I don't expect this to actually work. But let's give it a try and see what happens. Running the command, you barely leave the house. Well, that's pretty much all of us right now. <laughs> all right. So, okay, it's running. Let's see what happens. So I'm going to say movie new. New game starting in five minutes. So if you want to play, type in bang movie join. So far it's working. I'm very impressed. Dota 2 is now in. I don't think it's actually five minutes. It's going to be a little faster than that. Developer's Garage is in. Okay. Uh, I've actually, I've, I think I've reduced the time uh, to, uh, to make it start sooner. Oh, we've got lots of people in. Okay, so let's see, let's see if it works here. Haruhe, Calvin, Developer's Garage, Dota. You think lunch is just made of five-minute increments? Okay, so the game is now starting. Haruhe, may you go first. So enter bang guess plus the name of a movie. So, for instance, uh, you could type in, uh, bang guess, Batman. Okay. So, there you go. So, now it's Calvin's turn. you got to name an actor that's in Batman. So, I'm assuming this is the Tim Burton 1989 Batman movie uh, there, Calvin. So, why don't you type in uh, guess, and then you could say, like, um, uh, what's his name? Michael Keaton? Is it? No, that's not Keaton. Is it Michael Keaton? you got to do bang guess first. Okay, you got it. So now it's Dota's attitude. So you got to name a movie that uh, Michael Keaton is in, uh, Dota. So type in bang guess and then a movie that Michael Keaton is in. Do you know any movies with Michael Keaton? Do you know who Michael Keaton is? <laughs> um, so for instance, you could just say Batman Returns if you want to get uh, if you want to get cheesy because that's a sequel to Batman, right? <laughs> No, you guys say bang, guess, and then Batman Returns. So it would be like, guess, Batman Returns. There you go. So now it's developer's garage turn. you got to name an actor that's in Batman Returns. And it can't be Michael Keaton, all right? It's going to, it's going to, you know, maybe we'll test this, but it's going to give you a little error message that Michael Keaton has uh, already, been, already been used. So developer's garage, uh, actor that's in Batman Returns. Uh, yep, it's already been used. So cool. There you go. So you got to try somebody else. Thank you for testing that feature, by the way. You could enter, for instance, um, oh, is Michelle Pfeiffer? Was she Catwoman? You say bang guess Michelle Pfeiffer, maybe? I don't know. I don't know how to spell that. That's one of the problems with this game. In person, you don't have to look, no spelling, right? Yeah, you couldn't find an actor named Michelle Pfeiffer. That's not the right spelling. Uh... Or that war she wasn't in it. So anyway, uh, you are out, developer's garage. Now it's my turn. Danny DeVito. Yeah, he was... Was he... Was he Batman Returns? Was he the Penguin? Danny DeVito. Okay, boom. So I got that. Now it's Haruhi May's turn. You got to name a movie that Danny DeVito is in. Um, Danny DeVito movie. Uh, there's lots of them. But... Uh, what's... What's... what's uh, um, Twins? Tin Man? Uh-oh. Oh, Tin Men. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I don't think I've heard of that movie. I don't know if the challenge part of this actually works yet. So, do you know anything about Tin Men, Calvin? Because it's your turn. you got to guess a actor that's in Tin Men. Oh, Richard Dreyfus. Oh, you cheated. How dare you, Richard Dreyfus. Uh, Richard Dreyfus, was he in... Um, what about Bob? Uh, what happened? Did I just crash it? What about Bob? Is the question mark crash it? Oh, couldn't find the question mark crash it for some reason. That's weird. Or it didn't work. 
Okay, so Richard Dreyfuss was not in, but what about Bob? So now it is, wait, it says it's my turn again. What's going on? He was, though. Okay, what about Bob? I think it's the question mark that's throwing it off there. Okay, there we go. It worked that time. Weird. Um, okay, so there we go. Now it's over you, Haruhime. I thought I did the question mark first, though. Yeah, it's, it's, it has to be specific, I guess. I, I mean, it's, it's tough. Uh, Bill Murray, yep, okay, Calvin, move with Bill Murray. So this seems to be working okay. How is it, uh, how is it, uh, how do you guys think, think about, what do you guys think about this game? This, the letters and the swapping? Yeah, I like to guess what you, what you actually meant. So it's Matt Groves' turn, an actor that is in Caddyshack. Oh, that's going to be Rodney Dangerfield. Working good, kind of noisy. Because all the messages that are in the in the chat, right? So what I was thinking about is putting this maybe like a, a small portion of the screen somewhere around here that would show it some phonetics. Well, the problem is I'm kind of limited to what uh, to what uh, the TMDB API gives me, but uh, we could maybe work on that. So uh, Ruhime, it's your turn. How about different types of type up? Uh, so do you know who Rodney Dangerfield is, Haruhime? Little Nicky was, oh, he was in Little Nicky. Oh my gosh. A, a, a washamaka, maybe use whispers. Well, the kind of the fun of the game is to, is to see everyone else's, you know, the chain, right? And, and whispers, you might, you might not know what was in the, uh, what was in the chain. Calvin's turn. Hey, Dota, thanks for coming by and spending some lunchtime with us. I appreciate it. Enjoy that ham sandwich. Calvin, do you know any, anybody who's in Little Nicky? You should know the star of Little Nicky, at least. Relatively well-known comedic actor. Yep, Adam Sandler it is. So now it's my turn to guess an Adam Sandler movie. I'm going to say... Um, Waterboy. <laughs> okay. What? That didn't work? Oh, no. Is it is it two words, water boy? Or maybe it's the water boy. Ah, curse it is. You could use whispers like a washimaka said, not to clutter the chat, but display it on the screen. Oh, right. so I'm I'm I, what I'm what I'm proposing is instead of showing text messages to the chat, I would show a message somewhere on the screen. So I would completely just cut out Twitch chat from the. Unless you're saying, you know, people's command, people's guesses are too noisy. An actor that's in Jack and Jill. Oh, my gosh. Well, okay. Because what I'm seeing right now is, is a wall of me. It's a wall of M Matthew D. Groves just saying messages. So I, I would cut down on most of that by moving it all to the screen. Um, I don't know. I'll have to think about that some more. But it is working. Al Pacino was in Jack and Jill. Oh, my gosh. What a mess. Why would he be in that movie? <laughs> All right, you got to name an Al Pacino movie, Haruhi May. Calvin, you got to quit cheating, man. You got to quit cheating. You got to earn this. <laughs> uh, Hangman. Oh, my gosh. Haruhi May is picking up some relatively obscure movies. I never heard of Tin Men before. I never heard of Hangman before. And now, Calvin, you got to find someone else who was in Hangman. <laughs> Besides Al Pacino. Otherwise, I think Haruhi May is going to take it. <laughs> well, you got, you're on the clock, by the way, Calvin. What? Carl Urban, whatever. You're totally cheating on this, Calvin. You gotta name a movie that Carl Urban is in, Haruhi. I don't know who Carl Urban is. You just pick the most obscure name in that uh, list of credits. <laughs> Doom? You got you a bang guess. Oh, you're suggesting it for Haruhi. 
The boys on Prime? <laughs> what in the world? See, this is the problem with, with cheating, is because you start introducing all these obscure movies and actors. It's supposed to be, you know, from your own mind. All right, Haruhei, do you know anybody that's in Doom? I, I think I know... I only, I only can name one actor that's in Doom. If it's the if it's the right Doom movie, yeah, Dwayne Johnson. There we go. All right, Calvin, no cheating now. What else is Dwayne Johnson in? <laughs> what is he not in? Uh, <laughs> well, these days he's in a lot of stuff. Tooth Fairy. Yeah, he's in the Tooth Fairy. He's in like um, San Andreas. Um, uh, oh, he was uh, uh, the Mummy, right? Wasn't that was his first movie, right? Or his first big movie, anyway? Fast and Furious. Oh yeah, he's in a lot of those. Although the, the names of those movies are will be tricky because <laughs> they all they all have like it's like. Fast and the Furious 7, or Fast Fast and Furious 7, or The Fast and the Furious, that kind of stuff. Oh, no, the Tooth Fairy was not correct. So maybe it was one word, or maybe it was just Tooth Fairy or something. But anyway, uh, Calvin wins by cheating. That's not cool. Oh, look, it shows, uh, I've got some... Oh, because the game's over. It's just echoing stuff to the console now. I, that was a debug feature I had left over there. <laughs> so it's just going to keep echoing the chat. Anyway, there you go. So that was that was pretty cool. That works. Surprisingly well. I had one hiccup there with the uh, What About Bob. So I might, might want to look into that a little bit. But there we go. Pretty cool. So that, was, uh, that worked surprisingly well. Thank you all for helping me test that out. I appreciate that. Uh, of course, the other thing I, I need to do is store this data. Uh, yeah, I think uh, I think you get credit for for winning <laughs> since Calvin admitted to cheating. But uh, that's 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 a fun little game that you know I used to play college, high schoolish time frame uh, at, at parties and such. Uh, oh, you cheated with Wikipedia too. Oh, for the English. So that, I think that's probably okay. If you if you got the name from your head, you just need to look up the spelling. I'm okay with that because I don't. It's not really good. Uh, it's not a really good tolerance for spelling in this game yet. That something we may be able to work on or, or may not be. I don't know. Now make an ABC game for Final Fantasy VII. That's what you played in high school. ABC. Like you're going to name, what, materia, monsters, locations, characters? Eris, Barrett, Cloud, or Aerith, if you want to be like that. Dine, I don't know. Dine, I don't remember Dine. So you just name characters? Or are you naming just things that are in Final Fantasy VII? <laughs> Anything from the game, all right. It's interesting. We play play games like that with my with our kids. Like we'll name um, I don't know animals and uh, you know restaurants, things like that. It's like a, a fun uh, road trip game. Okay, well I've got about an hour of time left here, so maybe um, I will go ahead and just do the database implementation of this. It's going to be super easy to do, but I'm going to make it a separate project again. This will be the um, class library, yep. Movie game DB couch base. And I do this for a couple reasons. One is that it keeps the all the concerns separate in different separate projects. The second thing is if someone wanted to write a database plugin for some other um, you know, some other database. I don't know why you would use anything except Couchbase. You know, a Pokemon game with, uh, name a Pokemon with the letter C. <laughs> you're, you're way into Pokemon. <laughs> you keep bringing up, bringing up the Pokemon. Uh, but anyway, um, uh, 
that's the idea here, is that you could write another one and, and implement that and use that instead. Console simulator, where were we? Okay. So instead of in memory, which if you remember, huh, memory, remember, get it? You never played a true Pokemon game. This is just using a dictionary. So once I close that app, which I have closed it by the way, all that stuff has gone away. But what might be interesting is to collect data from those games, um, not only for one debugging reasons, right? You could see like what, what happened, what went wrong with what about Bob. I can explore that sort of thing. But also you can, you can uh, interesting queries like uh, which, which actor is, is used the most or, or which movie is referenced the most, right? Um, you, can get, you can get that information in there as well. And I, I think I could also, I, at some point, I thought about using this as a cache as well. There is even a RESTful Pokemon API. Haruhi, it sounds like you've got yourself a project to create on your own Twitch stream it is a Pokemon guessing game, uh, which with uh, Twitch connectivity that uses the RESTful Pokemon API. That sounds like a project that is right up your alley because I know you're way into Pokemon. PokemonAPI.co. Um, I, I played, uh, I think I tried playing one of the original Pokemons on Game Boy. For a while, I just never got into it that much. Um, Pokemon Snap, if you count that one, I, I played that one a, a fair bit. That one I found kind of fun. If you even consider that a game. Pokemon Stadium, Pokemon Snap. All right, there we go. Those don't count as as uh, as true Pokemon games. All right, fair enough. I think we'll go to Haruhi made for the judgment though. Are those true Pokemon games or not? You played Red, Blue, and Silver, not the collecting versions. But all I need to do is implement, basically, uh, two methods, right? Oh, gosh, where is it? Declaration. Of, I want iGameDB. Yeah, two methods is all you need um, to implement. So we're going to call this uh, Couchbase iGameDB. iGameDB. And so I need to reference the core project there. Okay. You play Red Blue and Silver Null Pokemon. Okay. Uh, so then this is just going to need um, probably something like. You wouldn't count Pokemon Snap as a game, though. <laughs> yeah, that's. I don't know. I mean, there's, there's, there's challenges and stuff, right? You're supposed to find certain rare Pokemon or make them jump out of a tree or whatever. It would be nice if over time, when somebody gets the answer, but the bot thinks it's wrong, that enough upvotes could add that version of the answer as an accepted version. What about Bob versus what about Bob? Question mark. Yeah, that could be useful too. We could just get enough information. And again, I, I thought maybe I could introduce another layer here so I, I don't have to make a REST request to TMDB every single time, right? So whenever someone enters Tom Cruise, there's no reason, because Tom Cruise is going to come up a lot, or uh, Kevin Bacon come up a lot, Tom Hanks, things like that. Just cache them in my in my in Couchbase so I have that data I can retrieve it locally. Uh, so, so I could also introduce a feature like that where you're talking about. It gets the accepted version. And I think... The TMDB API also has some sort of like fuzzing API in place, but um, I'd be concerned about fuzzing it too much. So one of the things I ran into with this that made me want to create a wrapper around TMDB service was there are movies out there with the same name, um, but um, it's it in some cases it's almost certain that you didn't mean. <laughs> uh, the the very very obscure one, right? So I think one of the ones I came up against first was you know, what was it? And I can't remember. But there was let's just say there's a movie called Star Wars that was made in like 1962, um, and it was a German film or something. And so if someone says Star Wars, it's almost certainly not what they mean. Is <laughs> is not that movie, right? It wasn't that, but there was some other movie like that. So there's a popularity ranking on TBDB, TBDB, TMDB as well. So I ranked it by popularity. Um, does it consider the spelling if it's right or wrong? Well, so in that case, it's not spelling. It's casing. 
Uh, it does, so I've actually built in some, some checks to make sure that casing is not going to be a problem. The Mummy with Tom Cuse versus Brendan Fraser. <laughs> yeah, I don't, know if you're, I don't know if you're typing that wrong on purpose or what, but... Uh, oh, yeah, right, yeah, there's two, there's two of the mummies. That's a good point, Developer's Garage. Yeah, I'm sorry. There's a Brendan Fraser version and a Tom Cruise version. Right, so which one? Um, yeah, uh, that's a good question. So I think I can, I can dive into how I, how I do the ranking, but I think I rank it by popularity. Uh, and I, maybe I rank it by date second. Um, so I don't know. That, that would be actually a really good, good one to check, right? The Mummy, because they're, they're literally the same name, right? I think. They're both called The Mummy. Uh, so which one is more popular? Which one is TMDB considered more popular? And, uh, you know, should recency factor into it, right? Because if, if you're playing this game in person, right, we can't, we can't, there's no way we can make a perfect version of this on, on Twitch chat, right? But if we're playing it in person, I could say, uh, I could say The Mummy, and I could say, oh, the, the, the latest one, the 2019 version of The Mummy, right? Whereas on a chat here, I mean, you'd have to, we'd have to make allowances for entering kind of metadata about it. Oh, I meant the Mummy 2019, not the Mummy 2000 or whatever it was, 1999. Five buckets. Okay. So this is going to be Couch Base Game DB. And we're going to add Couch Base Net Client. I'm still going to use the 2.x version, even though 3.0 is out. Uh, I'm going to stick with 2.x for now because I eventually plan to use this with dependency injection. And the dependency injection library for 3.0 is in progress, but it's not out yet. It's coming. So bucket, bucket there. Uh, okay, so then basically this logic is just going to basically be the same kind of logic that I have here. It's just going to say if does the database have that key, which in Couchbase would be uh, if the bucket exists, game ID. So if, if that doesn't exist, and this needs to be a string, then we're going to say uh, um, so we want to go ahead and create it, create it and return it, basically. So I'm going to say bucket dot uh, insert uh, with the game ID as key and a new game information uh, with uh, game ID and starting user. So that information will be passed in. So whenever a new game starts, we have to pick a user at random and create an ID for it. So that's, that's what this is doing here. And then, uh, so probably I'll just say game info equals like so, and then pass that into the database. And as it goes along, it's going to get that database updated. I'm going to return that game info there. So if it doesn't, if it, and if it, we know if it does exist, then we're going to just say uh, game info equals bucket dot get of game information, and it's going to be game ID dot two stream. Oh, I can't, I can't use that. Okay, let's call this new game info. game info and then we'll return game info dot value probably need some error checking things like that but that's fine and then all this does is just going to save it so we're going to bucket dot upsert uh, info dot id to string and info that's it that should be enough uh, okay so back over here to this comment this out and we'll say Couchbase is new Couchbase DB and needs to add a dependency or a reference 
to the database there. Hmm. Oh, it's Couchbase game DB. Sorry. Okay. Pass it into that. And this needs to actually have a bucket, which is something I want. So this will be Twitch setup. This will be Couchbase setup. And uh, leave those things commented out. So cluster equals new uh, cluster. This needs to have a reference to Couchbase as well. And by the way, there's a new uh, Couchbase command per request in the bot that'll tell you what Couchbase is. Just type bang Couchbase or bang what is Couchbase and it will tell you. New client configuration and again, just hard coding this. For now, ASP.NET, this will be a config driven thing, but a servers equals new less URI. New URI, localhost 8091, and cluster.authenticates, administrator, password, and then bucket would be cluster.get open bucket, and we'll call this one movie game bucket. Why not? So I need to create a movie game bucket. Okay, so bucket, this is just a local couch base, uh, but we'll call it movie game. Don't need to give it a lot of RAM for now. And there we go. That's it. It's just a place to store all these movie games. So I'm going to give it a try. Oh, this is still going to use Twitch. So, uh, movie new. Oh, I got an error message. What do we got here? Uh, could not connect. Huh? What happened there? Movie game. There it is. Administrator. Did I spell these wrong? wrong? Administrator. Password. Movie game. Oh, no. <laughs> I still haven't got the defend command. I can't even spell defend. <laughs> it's a raid from Pixel Logic Dev. Thank you very much for the raid, Pixel Logic. I appreciate it. Thanks for joining me, everybody. Great to see you. I'll give a second for the commercial to finish if uh, you all are getting one of those. But I appreciate you all stopping in. I am working on, and I'm kind of nervous right now uh, to, to do this because we've got a huge crowd, but I'm working on a game. And this game uh, is something you participate in with Twitch chat. Uh, so um, uh, I, I'm going to, I'm about, just about to start a new game actually, test it out. But I don't want 30 people joining the game because that could go on for a while. <laughs> I haven't put a limit on it yet, I don't think. So, but anyway, let's, uh, let's, I got a, I got an exception here and I'm trying to figure out why I'm not able to connect to the database. It's broken. Uh, yeah, so it's broken before you got here. <laughs> uh, why isn't it connecting to my database server? Uh, localhost 8091 administrator password that all checks out. Probably, I mean, this is not related, but I'll just need to do a dispose at the end. But why is it? It's called movie game. There it is, movie game. Administrator, am I spelling this wrong? Administrator password. Sometimes I can't see spelling mistakes. They're right in front of me. Oh, gosh. Um, do I have the right version here? 
installed couch base. Yeah, that's the right version. What am I doing wrong? I've done this a million times. And now it decides not to work. Oh gosh, I misspelled localhost. Aha! <laughs> that would be it. Thank you, Ilipas. That would be the reason I misspelled localhost. Okay. So, uh, it is running. And I'm going to kick off a new game. If you want to join, you can type uh, movie join. Uh, maybe, if this works. Is that, is that not the right command? Not movie join? Uh, hang on, it didn't, it didn't actually start the game yet. Because uh, I've got a crash. I've got a crash. Yeah. So, i got a null reference exception in my database. Thank you for following P... Co plea. Appreciate the follow. Glad to have you here. What is the null reference exception? What was that? Uh, game ID. Null reference exception. Well, uh, let's just debug it and see what the null re reference exception is. Okay, so I'm going to start movie new here again. And there it is. So bucket's not null. Uh, something in here. That's not null. Starting user will be me. Game phase starting. Yep, yep. That's all fine. Okay. Return. Output. Okay. Oh, okay, it's working now for some reason. Uh, it may, that may be a race condition. I'll have to check that. Okay, so if you type uh, movie join, you can join this game. This is kind of like the Six Degrees of Kevin Bacon game. I would ask you, please, since there's a lot of you here now, please only a handful join so I can test this out. We got Haruhime and myself in. That's enough to play a game. If someone else wants to join in, just type bang movie join and you'll be there. So you can see in the database here. Oh, time's up. Sorry, game's starting now. So that's that's okay. Um, so it's me going first. I'm gonna say Top Gun. And as we as we keep going here, we're going to see that that data gets in, entered here. So here's the first guess, right? Top Gun. And Tom Cruise. So now you've added Tom Cruise. See, now Tom Cruise shows up here, right? So it's going to keep on going like that. So I'm going to guess, uh, let's see, different Tom Cruise movie. I did Vanilla Sky last time. Um, I'm going to say um, Tom Cruise movie, uh, Tropic Thunder. Okay, so keep going like this. So you can see, as the game goes on, you can see here's all the players. Here's all the guesses as we go through. And it's all being stored in one single document here. These documents can be up to 20 meg. That should be plenty for a typical game of this. So if you've never seen Tropic Thunder or Huhime, it's a controversial movie, but there you go. You got Ben Stiller. Uh, and there, okay, so then I can guess another movie that Ben Stiller's in, and I'll say The Cable Guy. I used to be a cable guy, believe it or not. Um, not, 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 like the, not like Jim Carrey was in that movie, but I used to actually install cable. So there we go. Uh, the cable guy here. So it's just going to keep going. And these, these IDs correspond to the TMDB, which is kind of like IMDB, but they have, an, they have an open API, or they have a available API, public API. Jack Black. We're going to keep going all day. Ruhe, I, I, have an, I have the feeling that you're very good at this game. Movie that Jack Black is in, I'm going to say Nacho Libre. Okay. Retrieve again. So what I can do is, as this game is going on, I can actually get pictures of actors and pictures of movies from TMDB and show them here on the screen. Uh, instead of just flooding the chat with a bunch of messages like what's happening right now, maybe a, a corner of the screen, maybe the bottom left corner over there could have that kind of information. Silver King. Oh, you're supposed to... Oh, Silver King. It's funny. Silver King is actually is a professional wrestling name. Um, oh, I got an no reference exception here. 
Hmm, okay, so it looks like I have some bugs to work out with my game engine. But uh, there you go. That's, that's how it's supposed to work. And it's in progress. So uh, Silver Kings is a professional wrestler's name. I have to know that. We talked about wrestling last time. This is going to be a, a trend. We're talking wrestling. Pico Play, this is cool. I'm glad you think it's cool. Uh, this, is a, this is a fun game for me. This is something I've, I've thought about building in the past as a mobile app or something. Oh, thank you for the follow, G-Man. But, uh, you know, having a little Twitch game on here, is, is, uh, it could be fun. So people are hanging out, um, lurking. They can also play a little game. They can check out some code. It'll be a whole thing. So I'm going to work on maybe adding some visual elements for the to show on the screen, to show, like, um, um, you know, movie posters and um, pictures of actors, and things like that. Maybe to show who's still in the game, things like that. I don't know. I don't know if that's going to take up too much real estate or not, but that's that's kind of the plan. And I, and I could, honestly, we could just devote whole streams to this game. It'd be like a Jackbox type stream. And uh, maybe I can make it full screen and just show the whole history of actors as we go along. Someone actually did this as a, something similar to this as a, a demo at a conference once, at a booth. They, they were showing off um, some sort of visualization tool, I think. And so they showed a network, like a graph chart of actors and the movie they're in. So you entered, you did like Kevin Bacon said, so you entered an actor here and an actor here, and then it would chart out how they related to each other through the Kevin Bacon type game. Um, so that's, uh, that's, that's what I'm thinking, something along those lines. Uh, let me just got another chat message. Uh, probably not going to go that long. So uh, my colleague of mine, Eric Bouchard, is starting to get into the uh, streaming, the streaming racket, as you will, here on Twitch. And uh, I was thinking about raiding him today. Uh, he's not part of Team Live Coders, but uh, would like to kick some people over to him to get get started, get him up and running with his streams. But he's not going to be online until probably another half an, half an hour from now. So probably not going to happen today. Maybe maybe in the future. Because I'm thinking about just uh, ending ending the stream here today. So I started out on kind of a kind of a low energy, a little bit down in the dumps kind of mode. But did some coding today. Got this movie game working. Um, for the most part, I need to work on some some a few bugs and uh, database stuff here. Maybe we can do that next time. But I'm I'm very pleased with this. I'm very happy with what how this turned out and how I designed it initially, and, and it's it's working very nicely. So. I'm feeling a little better today. So I appreciate you all hanging out with me and uh, working through this. I'm going to go and uh, end the stream now, but we're going to kick off a raid. Uh, Twitch.tv slash team slash live coders. And let's see who is streaming. So uh, the raid today was from Pixelogic Dev, so I can't raid Pixelogic Dev. We could raid Dan Siegel again. Uh, Mr. Demon Wolf, what is Mr. Demon Wolf up to? Mr. Demon Wolf has been in this channel a few times, so I think we should raid Mr. Demon Wolf. I think he might be a new member as well. So, uh, if you want to go over to raid Mr. Demon Wolf, I'd appreciate that. Uh, or maybe he's not a member. Maybe I'm just talk, talking to him in Discord or something. I don't know. We're gonna raid Mr. Demon Wolf. So, uh, join me over there. HTTP Chunky just joining, just in time for the raid. That's the that's the one I wanted to raid later. Uh, one of the raid today is Eric Bouchard, HTTP Junkie. You should follow HTTP Junkie if you aren't already. Give him a shout out. There you go. Check out his Twitch stream. He's just getting up and started. Doing some cool stuff there. Uh, but we're going to go and raid Mr. Demon Wolf right now. So uh, let me give you a little uh, raid emojis to copy and paste. I really need to automate this. Bada bing. Bada boom. Copy and paste that. If you are not a subscriber, you can insert an uh, emoji of your choice, but uh, you can do, you can just paste that into Mr. Demon Wolf's chat as we go over there in the raid. But I will see you over there. Thank you for joining me today. I'll be back at 1.30 Eastern Time on Thursday. 1.30 Eastern U.S. Time on Thursday. So thanks for uh, joining me today. Bye-bye.